Hey everyone, it's me again, back at it with yet another video. And today we'll be diving into the world of PC VR connections, in particular for the Pico 4 headset. The headset is really good, but it truly unleashes its full potential once you have a solid connection. Shoutout goes to at 57 door for requesting this video. There are three main ways to connect your Pico 4 headset to your PC to enjoy the best possible PC VR gaming. And each of these methods has its pros and cons, so let's break them down to find which one's perfect for you. First things first, head over to the Pico App Store and download either the Pico Connect app, which is completely free, or alternatively, and my preference, the virtual desktop app, which costs you 20 euros currently. Make sure to install the app on both your headset and of course your PC. The main reason why I chose the virtual desktop app over the Pico Connect app is just because there's that little bit more of customizability in the settings. So let's jump into the first option you have, which would be the cable free experience and also how Virtual Desktop or Pico Connect intended us to use the headset is in a Wi-Fi mode, so wireless mode. Now, in order for this to work, you will have to get a Wi-Fi router, which many of you probably already own. So this can be a cost effective way but the five gigahertz channel you'll be using will mean that you will have to sit pretty close to your router or alternatively having a mesh system in place. In terms of setting everything up, it's pretty straightforward. Make sure you are on the same Wi-Fi on both devices, your PC and your headset, and simply open up the app and press connect. As a gamer myself, I tend to use an Ethernet cable connected directly to my computer. This just increases the stability of the line, so make sure that if you have the option to do this as well. In my experience using the wireless mode, I noticed that one of the pros was definitely not having to constantly sit at the desk or in general having to connect all these cables and of course you can charge whenever needed on the con side i would definitely say that it required me to sit pretty close to the router so this is a bit of a downside which can be fixed by simply getting a better router but that would set you back anywhere between i would say 200 to 350 euros to get a proper mesh wi-fi system the second method would be using a usb-c cable preferably one that is longer than the pico one um, if you want just head into the description below and you'll be able to find the link for this particular one i'm using in the video and along with that, you also need a side-loaded APK, which once again, you'll find below in the description. Following the link, you'll be directed to a Google Drive site where you'll be able to download it, place it onto your desktop. And at this point, you would want to connect your Pico 4 headset using the USB-C cable. The reason I chose this cable is because it has an angular connector on the one side, making it easier to plug that into the headset itself and just tying it all up neatly. The other end is going into the PC. Once you connect it, you should see the Pico 4 appear on your desktop. If it doesn't, just power on the headset. Head over into the folders into the download folder and copy and paste the APK in there. Securely disconnect the headset and let's jump into it. Once you're in the headset, make sure you are connected to your Wi-Fi. Head over to your files and your download folder where we place the APK, simply install it. 
Once that's done, head over to your apps library. And before we hop into virtual desktop or the Pico Connect app, simply go to the system settings, network and internet, and then hotspot and tethering and enable the USB tethering. Now you can head into the app of your choice. This method will require you to do the same thing every time you want to connect to your virtual desktop via USB-C. Very important also is to not switch up the order in which you do it. Lastly, just head into the Wi-Fi settings and turn them off and you should be connected via USB-C. This is definitely the cheapest method using just a USB-C cable you might already own. On the contrary, some users have reported blue screen crashes, so just keep that in mind and you're not able to charge your headset while using it. Last but not least, we have the third method, which was requested initially by one of my subscribers in the comment sections below. Talking of which, if you're not yet part of the community, feel free to like and subscribe, or if you do have questions, just write them down in the comment section below. Now, this option is definitely for those of you who like something in between the other two methods. Pros definitely being that you can charge your headset while playing the long VR sessions. You have a stable connection throughout the gaming and it not being the most expensive one. On the contrary, we have the cable mess, which wasn't too big of an issue to be honest, since there's only one cable going into the headset and the rest is pretty much three meters away. So that gives you quite some slack. Once again, for the setup, you'll find all the links in the description below. Starting off with the USB-C cable, which is three meters long, these female USB-C adapters, the Ethernet USB-C adapter, and two Ethernet cables. The reason you need two is my recommendation is to actually connect your computer directly to the router using Ethernet and doing the same with the headset. The USB-C to Ethernet adapter has an additional port on the side to charge the headset while you play these games. Then we have these female USB-C to female USB-C to just extend everything and not have it hang around your head. And of course the USB-C cable that I've mentioned before, which we'll use to start the setup. Now it might seem complicated, but just to make it more simple, Let's just take everything out of the way. Starting off, we'll take the USB-C cable with the angled side and place it into the headset and connect it with these straps to keep everything out of your face. Now to keep the rest even further from your face, we are using a USB-C female adapter that we connect to the other end of the USB-C cable. This is so that the charger and the ethernet adapter are three meters away from your face and you have a bit more flexibility to dodge and run into walls, I guess. As you can see here, the USB-C adapter to Ethernet and then of course, last but not least, the Ethernet cable, which in this case is only used for demonstrative purposes. I have two 10 meter cables, which I'll include in the links in the description below. And Lastly, you will have to connect the other end of the Ethernet port into your modem or router. 
should you have longer gaming sessions, you are able to just plug in the power adapter into the side of the USB-C Ethernet port. Um, and you'll be able to charge your headset while gaming. For this method, you do not need the side-loaded APK. The only software you do need is either Virtual Desktop or the Pico Connect app. And you should turn off the Wi-Fi once you're inside the headset. So let's jump into the headset and see how each of the methods performs. In order to keep the testing fair for all the three methods, I decided to stick to Microsoft Flight Simulator, which is quite demanding uh, compared to other VR games, but it is also optimized. I also use OpenXR, this is not a must, but I'll leave the link in the description below for those things and maybe we'll go into detail on a separate video if you guys want me to. In terms of PC specs, I am running this on an RTX 4090 Founders Edition along with an i9 12th gen processor from Intel and 32 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. So first things first, let's quickly just hop into the options and switch this to VR. I have set everything to Epic and turned it up all the way with DLSS enabled. Just so you guys know. For the headset performance, you have the black box below so you can see what the metrics are there. Essentially, you want to keep an eye on everything that pops up yellow. As you can see currently the 5 GHz at 283 megabits per second which is the connection speed, the latency perhaps and then the bitrate. Now the frames will depend on your system so we won't take a closer look at that during the testing. Now I've chosen to fly around in my hometown in Pretoria in this case, we are flying from the Johannesburg International Airport. For all the three testings, we fly in the same area, same conditions and the same plane. So let's just hop into the game and I'll split up the screens into the three different methods. Okay, so on the left we have the Wi-Fi option. In the middle we'll have the USB-C only option and all the way on the right the Ethernet to USB-C. Let's start off with the most common metric which is the frames per second. These do depend on your hardware and your system settings so we're not going to go into detail. Most of my stuff is set to EPIC and DLSS is turned on as previously mentioned. One thing you immediately notice on the Wi-Fi option is that the transfer rate, so the, where the 5 gigahertz is stated, is much lower than the other two options. As you can see, this range is anywhere between 250 megabytes per second all the way up to sometimes 850. This really depends on how good the connection is and how stable it is. So moving closer to the router or the modem would result in better performance and just a better connectivity overall. As you can see here, it drastically improved once I moved closer to the router. That being said, if anyone were to use the Wi-Fi at the same time or turn on the microwave or anything that disrupts it, it can drop very fast and then result in a higher latency, which means more packet loss and more lagging. Since the other two devices are directly connected either to the PC or 
in this case to the router or modem they do have the maximum megabytes per second or bits per second which in this case is the 1200 so what's the verdict which one should you choose well it depends on what your budget is whether you want the ability to move around freely or whether you don't care about that if you want to charge your device or not in my opinion the best connection you can get will always be over the ethernet option the cheapest option would be the USB-C way but this would result in sometimes having blue screens since this has not been fixed and I don't think it will be fixed to be honest and on the Wi-Fi end you definitely do have the flexibility but in order to make this run properly and with a good connection without disruption you will have to invest into a proper router that has Wi-Fi 6E so this brings me to the end of the video I hope you guys were able to learn something from my tutorial and hope it was helpful stick around till the end where I do a spectacular landing just kidding I was panicking now if you guys would like to support my channel I would really appreciate it if you would write down in the comment perhaps you have any other requests or ask any question you like I'll be more than happy to answer them and if you find this content helpful then it would be awesome if you would help me out by subscribing and liking the video thanks peace out